Okay, today I'm working on uh, 2012 Ford E150 with the 4.6, and the transmission is the 4R70W. I, I have it here uh, down and clean and pretty much sub assembled. And what I wanted to do, since I am still waiting for a couple of things that I forgot to order, some bearings and stuff that I can't even put in because it would be all the way at the bottom of the case, I figured maybe tomorrow morning, I'm doing an intro now, and tomorrow morning we can assemble the unit together. And I'll talk through it as I'm doing it, and uh, we'll go over a couple of things here also before we load everything into the case. So again, this is a 2012. And pretty much every 2012 that I see come through the door has a bad gear train. I'm not really sure why, but uh, one easy way to tell what we're what you're dealing with this one really wasn't that bad these things sometimes are normally destroyed and when I say it wasn't that bad the gear train is bad but when I mean it wasn't that bad the transmission with the bad gear train came apart fairly simple all right so when I took the the um, input speed sensor out that they added in 2004 and up you can see the crap on the magnet here which again isn't that bad, but that's usually a sign of, hey, we got something going on, something broken in this transmission. It's absolutely pouring out, by the way, and I, uh, as uh, I saw it do the intro, I saw the dark cloud coming out, I get it's pouring. Okay, so I want to go over, these are the old parts here, and I want to go over uh, the planet set and what actually happened to this. And I have everything here. Uh, I have a new planet set. Um, the bow body is done, and I'm waiting for a set of pump gears. I'm waiting for some bearings uh, to go on the direct drum, because uh, they do have a high failure rate, and, and that's what I'm waiting for. That's why I can't load this into the case. So um, what I can do today, what we'll do today is let's go over um, the old parts, the bad parts. I kind of want to let you know what happened. You know, it's a pretty common problem. Again, 2012, usually planet set goes out, uh, direct drum goes out. And in this case, I had to do the uh, output shaft and the uh, part gear that uh, um, that attaches to that, you know, and it's held on with the snap. Okay, and then, and then we can talk about some stuff with, uh, with this or we'll get into that maybe tomorrow morning, you know, just kind of go over some stuff with this and then load everything into the case. So, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I, I do get questions uh, a lot on 4L70W. It's really not a bad transmission to work on. It's fairly simple to do, um, but there's a couple of things that you have to do and it'll, it'll work real nice, you know, when it goes back in the car. So I'm going to Get a little closer. Let me kind of show you the, the old parts here, the bad parts. And then uh, if I have time, if not, we'll just do it in the morning. Um, we'll just go over. I got to finish doing the pump. You know, we can put the pump, uh, the pump together because I'm waiting for the gears. Um, I have my electronics. And I'm waiting for the bearings. That's really about it. Uh, Converter's coming too. Uh, okay, so let me get a little closer and we'll just uh, go over this stuff and then we'll go from there. All right, so let me get a little closer. All right, all right, so first here is, uh, you know, the planet. This is no good. You know, from a ferry going bad, it just kind of snowballed and, and chopped up the gears. Okay, so. What I think happened with this thing, here's the direct drum, but on this side where the bearing rides is no good. Also the part here, the bearing rides there also, that one that went bad, and the output shaft, you know, was all kind of worn out here, and, and I just didn't feel comfortable using it. This actually is a uh, contractor, a very busy contractor, and this guy goes, uh, you know, from, uh, Western, you know, Long Island, all the way out east uh, to work. You know, it's a pretty busy guy. And um, so this is like an emergency job, as it is with most contractors. And uh, he coordinated it uh, to do whatever he's got to do. 
um, to get you know with, with his work, and then and then he'll be back on the road um, probably in about a day and a half. I'll have this thing done. I'll wait for a couple of things. I'm going to put it together and go back in the car. Um, all right, so just give me two seconds. I just got to do something, and I'll be right back. All right, so let me show you what I think uh, happened here again. So here's the output chair, which I changed. Okay, and then you have torque yeah, that goes on here, and this is held on with a snap ring. Okay, this is okay. There we go. All right, and this is held on with a snap ring here. All right, so this snap ring actually broke, and then. I believe what happened is the is the output chair pushed on and the and the I can't even put this thing in. I had to bang it out. Uh, direct drum is here, so I think with the snap ring broken and this output chair moved and put a lot of pressure on it, the bearing let go. This is what's left of the bearing that would normally look like this. And then the bearing broke and it just kind of snowballed and broke all the gears up. So that's what I think had happened to this. Um, yeah, this is all like flared out. I can't even. I had to bang the drum out with a hammer, so this thing won't even go on. And I believe that's what happened from this snap ring breaking. And they actually do sell this snap ring separately. So got a new planet set, uh, new alpha shaft, park gear, uh, snap ring. I have because I have a few in the drawer. And this actually, I'm waiting for new, a new bearing. All right, I'm waiting for a new bearing for here. This is a brand new direct drum. A new bearing here and a new bearing here because both of these bearings actually have high failure rates. So I like to put those new, so I'm doing that. And let me just turn my light back on. Okay. And also from the force of pushing it, pushing everything up, the bearing inside this planet also, if you can see that, is no good. But it's all pretty much from that bearing going bad in between uh, the direct drum and this part here. Uh, so that's that, those are those parts. <clears throat> Okay, a new band, a new reverse band I always get. Uh, these bands like to break, and we got some metal filings that are etched into the band. All right, let me just grab this line one second. Okay, so that's these parts. That everything is new. Snap ring, bearing. All right, the pump gears. The pump gears get worn out here. All right, so I like to change the pump gears uh, pretty much on the overhauls too, unless you don't really see, you know, too many, uh, you know, it doesn't look too worn out here, but I don't really like these, so I change the Okay, all right, so real quick, I'm gonna just film this segment with the extension housing over again because the phone keeps ringing. Um, all right, so we got two gaskets in the kit, and this is the later extension, uh, the later uh, extension housing. Okay, so it would take this gasket here, and this is the earlier one here. Now, what I wanted to point out with these late extension housings, I have the rear seal in here already, and the, it has the uh, extension housing bushing in here. All right, if the bushing is good, even if it's a little worn out, leave it alone. Because if you try to press, even if you press a new one in, there's something about these later tails and the extension housing bushing, it squeezes it so much that the drive shaft won't fit in. Okay, and sanding this thing out, sanding it out, there'll be nothing left on the bushing, and you're gonna have to get another good use extension housing or tail housing. All right, so I usually never change these bushings because if you do, it's gonna be a definite problem. So I wanted to let you know that before I forget to tell you. Okay, so I'm waiting for my pump ears, okay, and then we're gonna put it together. And then what we're gonna do is air check the forward clutch and the reverse input clutch and make sure that's working. Once we get the direct drum into the case, well actually, you know what I'll do? Once I get my bearings, I will put the direct drum on here. We can air check it, air check it through 
once I get the bearings, we'll install the direct drum in here, and then I can air check it through here. And then we can probably just put this whole assembly in as one. Uh, also, 2009 and up, they switched to a soft wire harness. They had a hard wire lead frame in there. Okay, so 2009, they switched it back. And of course, if they switch it back, you're gonna have different solenoids, different EPC, which I already have in the case, and a different lockup solenoid to match the harness. Uh, okay, so I guess that's about it for now. Um, so I'm gonna catch up with you guys tomorrow. We'll finish putting this stuff together. And then what I probably do is put the camera on top of the bench facing into the barrel of the case and we can build the unit up uh, and we'll just give it a shot. All right, so that's all for now. And I'll catch up with you guys in the morning with this 4R70W. Okay, so my parts arrived. And the first thing we're gonna do is finish putting the pump together. So I have my new bushing and I tried the new bushing on the converter hub, and it's okay. I have my front seal in here. All right, so I got my new set of gears. Okay, and then this one here, you have it kind of beveled here and flat on top. So the flat is gonna face you. That'll face up and the bevel will face down. That will go into the converter neck. on here ready for the forward and reverse input drum. So I'll tighten this down. All right, then I'm going to torque these uh, pump bolts to uh, 20 foot pounds. make sure that the gears turn okay. Okay, so here is the converter that's going to be going in the car. Okay, that looks good. I always like to try the pump after I put it together. Um, this way the transmission is done on the jack and they're putting the converter in and say, uh-oh, the converter doesn't spin. Then you gotta pull it all apart again and fix that. Okay. Okay, now, we have a molded piston for the intermediate clutch and it has a check ball right there. And these are the springs, the return springs for the piston. So you want to make sure that you don't put the check ball on top of the return springs. Okay, so what I do here, the way this gets set up, this part here, this with the U shape in it, faces up. 
Okay, and you have your feed holes down here, and then you have the one, let's see, yeah, the feed holes are down there, and then uh, it's gonna go around this bolt hole right here. Okay, let me just see if I could maybe switch angles and um, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, just give me one second. Okay, so this actually is going to sit like this when it's all together. All right, when you install them to the case, it'll be this way, but then you put the pump in. All right, so basically it's gonna sit like this. All right, so you have your springs here, here, and here. So you just wanna put the check ball in any spot but that. So check ball is here. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put the piston in just like this. So this way it will be out of the way. All right, so it's gonna sit over here, right? In this position. All right, so let's get. Okay, put this back on, and we're good. Okay, also, here's the pump washer, and these are selective. Uh, and I probably have mentioned this before, but if you look at it, there's a number, okay? They also could go by the color. This here is number three, the number is here. But there's probably about, I don't know, four or five different ones. Okay, there's that, and then pump o-ring. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to air check uh, the two drums. So I need to get set up for that, and what I want to do is these old parts here. I'm going to box those up, get them off the bench so I have more room. All right. Um, okay, so let me do that. And then I'm going to set up because the, the input shaft, I got to put through the hole in the bench so we can air check everything. Uh, also, I got my new bearings here uh, for the direct drum. And also, uh, I checked the bore in the case that the overdrive servo rides on all right and it wasn't it wasn't perfect it was a little loose because I have a um, I have an apply pin and it was a little loose in there so Sonic sells and we're gonna set this up this an apply pin that takes an o-ring so instead of sleeving the case you can use this and I've used this many times and it works great so we're gonna um, switch out the pin. This is a new servo. I'm gonna switch out the pin here uh, with this Sonics pin. All right, so let me just get set up and we'll air check the drums. Um, and then I just kind of want to go over the planet set um, because the first time that I ordered the uh, whole planet set, uh, I got the wrong one. I got a 92 like to 03 and this is an 04 and up. So I just want to show you the differences. This way when, uh, if you ever have to do that, you can check the parts, make sure you got the right stuff, but always match the parts up. And then we can uh, go ahead and put this trans together. All right, so just give me a few minutes. Let me get set up for all this and I'll be back. All right, so the first thing we could do is air check the reverse input drum. So these are metal rings down here that are locked. So when you put the grease on, you can just put it around and then the rings for the forward drum, uh, they're plastic, but they're kind of butt cut rings, so they're not locked. So just be careful uh, putting the grease along, uh, around uh, the forward uh, rings for the forward clutch. Okay. I also have new bushings in my drum. 
okay? Fits nice. All right, so that apply hole, well, this is the, uh, for the intermediate, this is for the re reverse input, which we're gonna check now, and I believe the forward is this one. Yeah, that sounds pretty solid. Holds it. And yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now the forward drum. And also, you know, I have new rings, new solid white rings here. Uh, I put one ring on at a time. I, I, I spin the ring on, like with a scribe, and then I use the stator try to center it, grease it, and use the stator. It's got a big enough chamfer that'll resize the ring and shouldn't go, it should go in without a problem. Shouldn't have a problem. But just try to, you know, squish it as best you can back to size, put some grease on it, put some grease on here, and just slowly go in and it'll kind of drop right in. Uh, if it doesn't seem like it's going, just don't force it. I mean, it's, it's possible, it, you know, end sticking out, it'll tear the ring, but for the most part, it's really not a big deal because you have a big enough chamfer here. Okay. Also what I like to do with the forward drum because sometimes there's a little too much clearance in the clutch pack. Um, I keep on the shelf early um, AOD forward frictions. The clutch diameter on the outside is a little smaller but it's the same inside diameter, so it'll fit in the hub, and it just take up some clutch clearance so the clutch pack doesn't seem, you know, that loose, too, too loose. I also do that with the direct drum also. See, that's a nice air check. Nice air check. Solid. Let me just show you here real quick. I didn't really do this thing from start to finish, but I had the chance to film an assembly since I was waiting for the parts. Okay, so this is the uh, early clutch that I use versus the one that comes in the banner kit. And remember the uh, exities other one for you. So this is the uh, correct clutch and this is the one that I put in for spacing and the inside diameter is the same but just slightly different on the outside here but on this early clutch you know it still fits onto the hub so it's not a problem. So I like to do that um, so it takes up takes up a little more space so there's not that much clearance in the clutch pack. Okay. All right, so we got some good air checks there. That's nice and solid. Let's get this out of the way. just want to show you here real quick is the differences uh, that you can spot right away if you happen to get the wrong planet set like I got. It happens. Okay, so this is the uh, 04 and up. Okay, so first one telltale sign is these are the, uh, the lugs that are used for park and also the lugs that the output speed sensor reads and you can see it extends from here all the way down to here. Okay, also this shell is non ferrous So, you know, you can't, mag uh, uh, the magnet doesn't stick. Okay, so this is 04 and up. 04 and up again has the input speed sensor. All right, so this is the first set that they accidentally sent me. 
All right, and as you can see, the lug nut, the lugs, are much smaller and there's a hole. Okay, so the output speed sensor on 92 to 03 reads down here with the hole. All right, so if you put this in and it'll fit accidentally into an 04 and up, you're gonna get output speed sensor codes. All right, so you gotta wanna look at the length here and also the shell is magnetic. Okay, so that's another telltale sign that this is a 92 to 0, you know, up to 03. All right, so if you have to order a planet set, you know, definitely match everything up and make sure these, you know, are, are two all the way down to here. And it looks like this, there's no hole because that would be an early set. Okay, so let's just put this back, put this back. Okay, so let me get the camera set up and I guess we could start loading everything into the case. Now I'll get the camera set up on top of the bench and then, uh, oh, you know what we gotta do before we do that? I wanna put this pin, change this pin over here. Here's the one that we get from Sonix. Comes with a couple O-rings and a washer and the pin. So we got an O-ring that goes here and an O-ring that goes here. All right, they say if you want it to shift firmer uh, to use this washer, uh, which goes on the end here, but I, I never use it because these are just regular cars. Okay, so we're gonna take this clip off here And also, by chance, if you are using one of these and you take the clip off and the clip goes flying, there's one that comes in the TransTech overhaul kit because these do like to break. Okay, so I'm just going to push down on this a little bit. Take the clip out. Okay, so here is the pin. All right, so. going to use this one okay so we're going to put the spring seat on and then we're going to put this o-ring on okay down here and then the spring let's grease that o-ring up Push down a little and get the clip started. Okay. There we go. And then the other O ring right on here, like that. And then I use a lot of grease, some STP uh, on all on the, the apply pin and in the bore as well. Okay. So that goes there. New uh, snap ring in the kit because they also like to break. Okay, so we are ready to put this transmission together. So let me get set up over by the bench. Okay, here is the direct run. So I'm gonna take this bearing out. Okay, you also have a washer here and I'm gonna put this new one in. And here is the hub. Okay, also on this one, 
Okay, this is this is pretty good. You can also tighten this up by getting, uh, if you can't get the early clutch, you can get like a, a thicker snap ring, like a 90,000 snap ring. So let me just show you this here real quick. Okay, so this is the clutch that comes in the banner kit, and this is the early thicker one that I use one to take up some space. And I've been doing that for a while and it's working out okay. But again, uh, there is a, um, there is a, uh, I believe, selective snap ring because when I, sometimes when the snap ring is no good and I order one, it's a pretty thick snap ring. It's about, like I said, about 90 thousandths. And then usually when I get that snap ring, I don't have to put the, the extra clutch in or the thicker clutch in, not an extra clutch. I sub one out. down. Here it goes. But it's out like one clutch. I can't spin it. Okay. So let's do this. Take some of them out. Okay, and we do that. Okay, all right, so let me get set up over by, uh, I'm going to put the uh, tripod onto the bench facing down into the case. Okay, so this one, and then we have this bearing here, which is new. We'll go on, and then we're going to... Show you one other thing here. You got some solid rings here. Okay, and what I use these drums sometimes they break out of the center, which is what happened to this. So I use this as a tool because these are also solid rings to seat the rings like that. Okay, so this drum here. And then what we're gonna do is air check it. And then once it's in the case, we'll air check it again. I don't have a, you know, a decent seal, but uh, we got a good air check there. So if you ever have to change the direct drum on one of these, oh, really in there, the drum that you're probably going to get is going to be an aftermarket drum, which is fine. But the only thing is, uh, there's not, the chamfer here is a little smaller than the one on the original drum. It's easier to use the, an original drum to seat the rings versus an aftermarket drum. So if possible, if the drum is no good because the planets are bad or something like that, if you can use the original drum uh, to, you know, to resize the rings, that would be great. You know, you can always put a clamp on it and, and, and uh, 
tighten the clamp, leave the clamp on for five minutes or so, and the ring should resize, then you can put the drum on. You know, there's different ways, but I have this, so just makes it a little easier. Okay, so we got the rings here, we got new rings here, new snap ring, new output shaft, ring gear, whole back of this unit was no good. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're ready to put this together, so let me get set up over there. I have the bearing, uh, the case bearing in the case already. Uh, so let me get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're ready to load everything into the case. All right, so here is my case bearing. All right, and before I install that, all the way down on the bottom, of course, uh, I installed a new case bushing. I like to do that. I mean, I have the, you know, the proper bushing drivers and stuff to do that, but, you know, what you can do to see if you absolutely have to change it is you can use this piece because the bushing rides here. Set it in there, see how the movement is, you know, if it's questionable and you think you have to change it, you know, uh, you could. You got to knock it out from the other side. It's, you know, it's a little tricky to do. But if it's okay, you can leave it. Now, another way to tell if the bushing is worn out is these rings here, okay, will start to cut grooves into the case. And if that happens, you can actually get the case repaired. You know, there's people that sleeve the case. But, and then you got to change the bushing. They don't change the bushing for you. So that's just kind of something to watch out for. You know, if you have the right tools, of course, it makes everything a lot easier. But, you know, the majority of the time, um, you know, the bushings probably aren't that bad. But, you know, I would at least look at it and, and see how it feels. Okay. So let's load this in. Okay, so that's in, and it's down all the way. And now you can tell you got a lip right here where a snap ring is gonna sit. Okay, around the whole case. And if it's even with that, you're in all the way. If it's above that, it's not in all the way. All right, next is gonna be the direct drum. My hands are a little slippery, so I'm just gonna hold it with a rag so it doesn't slide out of my hand. Okay, all right, so we're gonna slide this on. Okay, that look good. And now we're gonna put a snap ring in for a spacer. And that sits against the case. Okay, so the ring gear is below that. Um, so you just got to make sure that everything is down all the way so everything sits pro properly, okay? Next we have a new reverse band. Uh, so you got the two anchor pins here, go against here in the case. And this band, this reverse band, you know, with the servo that goes in on the other side, on the valve body side, band's not going to fall out of place. The overdrive band's going to fall out of place if you take the servo out. Okay. So there's that. Now we're gonna get the planet. I'm gonna have to stand on a little box here. Okay. Also have a new bushing, new bushing here. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to block view here. And you got to get into the spline of the, uh, oh, you know what, I wanted to tell you something here. This bushing, um, you got to, you got to countersink this bushing a little bit because the bearing, <clears throat> let me just get this piece here. 
All right, so this is the old bearing that goes on the uh, inside the direct drum. Okay, and there's a little lip on it. So you have to set it on top and just make sure the bearing lip and the bushing are not touching. So you have to hit the bushing down far enough um, to clear that. Okay, that went in very nicely. Okay, next we do the center support and the way that's gonna go in. So you have the speed sensor here and this window here is gonna uh, go uh, over there uh, to house the, so the speed sensor can't fit through. All right, now sometimes these will drop right in, sometimes they won't, but what you gotta do is you gotta spin the planet and then just kinda try to maneuver it. So it's halfway down. So let's see if I can just gently tap it in. All right, and it's turning. Okay, so it's on the spray, so it turns one way and locks the other way. Okay, so the next thing here, so this is the front of the case. All right, and probably around like the one o'clock position, there's gonna be an anti-rattle clip. All right, this is what it looks like. And it's gonna go in here. So you gotta get it below because then you gotta put the center support snap ring on. So we just kind of push it. You know, it's got tension on it, so it's kind of like spring-loaded, you know. So you just tap it down and it'll stay. Okay, that's very good. Okay, now we have the snap ring. All right, so this end that sticks up, you're gonna start that. So the input speed sensor goes here. Okay, so you're gonna start the snap ring right here with the edge that's up, and then it'll end right before because you can't cross over the where the input sensor goes. Otherwise the sensor won't fit. So we start here, and we go around, and it's all the way in. All right, so that's how that goes. And now what I'm gonna do is take the camera down here on the floor. Uh, we're gonna install the reverse piston, and we're gonna air check the direct drum. All right, so, and then we'll go back up and finish loading up up to the pump. Uh, okay, so let me uh, do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so first thing we'll do is install the piston. All right, now with these pistons, uh, there's grooves on here. All right, so usually the four R70Ws always take three grooves. You can count them, one, two, three, okay? I rarely see anything else. There's one, two, and three grooves, but I rarely see anything other than three grooves. Okay, so that's the piston. Here is the cover, molded rubber cover. All right, so what I So I'm just gonna pretty much just use my body weight and push the piston in, and it's automatically gonna get caught onto the reverse band. And then we'll put the snap ring in. Okay, so that's in, like that. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do while we have the tripod there is we're going to air check the direct drum. If I can get this thing plugged in. Okay, so that's right here. All right, that sounds pretty solid. Okay. Okay, so let me put this back up on the bench and we're gonna finish loading this up to the pump. 
and then I'll show you how I put the uh, uh, overdrive servo in. Uh, okay, give me one second. Okay, here. one thing I forgot to tell you uh, when we were going over the transmission on the bench is on the on the back of the uh, reverse input drum. There's the mechanical diode or spray on earlier ones for uh, intermediate. Okay, and it's held on with a snap ring like this. And most of the time, this snap ring is no good. It's all bent out of shape and it's out. Okay, so I replace it with a spiral lock. So this is the lock that goes on and this is the ring, spiral ring, you know, that sits in here and then you can peen it like on four sides so it doesn't come out. All right, so we're gonna load the drums in and then you'll, you'll see it. Got to spin these drums in here. And I believe that's in. And to tell it's in, you can slightly lift up and it's hitting solid. Okay, so she's down all the way. Here is the diode and here is the spiral lock. Okay, so next is the overdrive band. And this one you gotta kind of put into place and then push the servo in. See, there's no way that it'll stay in place. Because I'm um, putting a scribe through the uh, hole that the apply pin is gonna go. And you actually gonna uh, to get a band to catch. Actually, you're gonna have to hold it and then push the piston in. So I can show you how how I do that. And then I'll um, bring the camera down and we'll put the piston in. I'll show you how I kind of set it up. snap ring pliers like this to put the snap ring in. All right, so here's just a, a servo pin I got. So what I do is you gotta see if you push the servo pin through, the band's not gonna get caught. So you actually gotta put the band into place and then you gotta have the servo kind of in the bore already. And now, so that's how, you know, you gotta physically put the band onto the servo pin and now let me bring the camera down and then we'll put this uh, piston in. Okay, let me just reposition here. Give me one second. Okay, so here is the servo. Won't the O-ring, I got a, a mixture of the trans gel and the STP. So we're just gonna put this in place. All right, this has a pretty heavy spring on it. So it should at least sit flat you know, then you know the servo was in all the way. Or it's just gonna go at that point. Okay, so I have the snap ring here, new snap ring that comes in the kit. And now I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna put the band onto the servo pin. Okay, so that's on. I wanna get this ready. Okay, then I'm gonna kind of give it a, oops. I'm gonna kind of give it a big push here, but this is a pretty heavy spring. Okay, ready? Okay, then I release it. Now it's still out a little bit, but it is caught. So it's not gonna fly out, and I'm just gonna hit the rest of the snap ring. Hit it around. Okay, it's in. 
And then what I'm going to do is just take the screwdriver here, the little pry bar. I can see the band, I can see the servo pin, it is caught, so that's good to go. Okay, I'm going to put it back up on the bench. We're going to load the intermediate frictions and the pump in. Okay, so now I have the intermediate clutches and steels, and there's four on the 4070Ws. They're thinner. They added one. On the early ones, there were three. And the steels, of course, are thinner. All right, so we're going to load these up. Now, the piston is on the pump, so the piston is going to be up here, so the pressure plate is going to get loaded in first. All right, and you could just look at the uh, how the plate is designed and match it up. It'll drop right in. Okay, then we do the disc. Okay, now we have an anti rattle clip. Okay, for the intermediate clutches. Um, I honestly know some people that take this thing out, throw in the garbage, and don't worry about it. They added this, I don't know, maybe 04 and up. Not really sure why. Um, I don't ever remember having a problem with the clutches rattling or anything. So, again, I know some people that take this thing out and throw it in the garbage. If you're building a transmission, you got the pump on, you see this thing laying on the bench, you know, honestly, I probably wouldn't worry about it. So this goes also around the one o'clock position right here. And that's what it looks like. All right, so this part faces up and then you pretty much just put this right into place and push it down. That's it. Okay, next we have our set of springs and this piece here, I mean there are different ones, but with this set of springs, uh, this piece goes at the 12 o'clock position in the case. Okay, it's gonna sit right there. And then uh, let me just grab the pump gasket. Give me one second. Okay, so we got the pump gasket. And we're just going to line that up. Alright, so we have a bolt hole here. And a bolt hole here. And then there's the extra feed hole here. So this gasket is just going to go straight on. Just like this. Okay, so that's... All in place, I got some grease around here. Now we're gonna load the pump. And then I got my bolts ready, I got my torque wrench ready. Okay, so I'm gonna line it up with this one here, which is this. This hole right here with the feed hole and then the other hole end, so I'm gonna go with this one. Through. Line her up.
and we can go ahead and tighten this down. You're going to torque these down also. Oops, a little extra light there. Okay, so now we're going to uh, make some room on the bench and we're going to pick it up uh, um, on the bench. What we're going to do is uh, the one, two accumulators are already in, which I'll show you. We're going to put the two, three accumulator in, we're going to put a test plate on it and air check the unit. So this way, if there's an issue, I mean, this air check, usually these things air check pretty solid. They've always have. And if there's an issue with a, a you know, a shift or something like that, more than likely the problem would be in the valve body if this thing air checks solid. Okay, so um, let me get set up for that and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so, uh, so we got the overdrive servo piston, reverse, one, two accumulator piston, and now we're gonna install the two, three accumulator piston. All right, so the one, two takes couple of springs in there, pretty heavy springs, really got to push down on that to get that snap ring in. Uh, it's a molded rubber piston, a molded rubber cover, uh, so just make sure the, you know, the cover goes in okay. Uh, sometimes the, you know, you may have to finagle it and push the thing in, but it'll go in, but the springs are a little, a little heavy. Okay, so the 2-3 piston also is molded. And what I do is I just kind of take it in my snap ring pliers here. Alright, and you just gotta kind of try to spin it in. You know, find the spot and it'll drop right in. There we go. Okay. Alright, so then we have the spring. And then we have the little, let's put it up this way. Then we have like the little uh, uh, top piece. So it looks like a top hat or a sombrero, if you will. All right, so we want to make sure that the spring is center onto that. And that just has some tape, so that'll just kind of stay in place like that. And then I have the, uh, uh, the KO92 plate, the super tough plate from Superior. And this piece I have to put on. All right, so I put a little grease on there and put it right on top of the hat. Okay, and then we have a screen. And that is gonna go right here. And also before we put the valve body on, we're gonna put, I gotta do a ring here on the soft wire harness. Okay, we will put that in. leave the wires aside for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I have a test plate here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just install the test plate, put all the bolts in, you know, just kind of like the shape of the valve body, and then we're going to air check the unit, take the plate off, and install the valve body. All right, so give me uh, a few minutes. Let me just do that, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have the test plate on, and just regulate the air here. I don't want like to use too much. Okay, so we're going to air check um, first the forward clutch. Uh, that would be forward clutch here. That's pretty solid. And I'm using, not even using that much air, hardly any air. Okay, this is the direct. 
That's good. Intermediate. Uh, reverse input. Band. And reverse band. This is the one to accumulate it here, so you can air check that. You know, you can like try to push down on it and air check it, but <clears throat> everything seems good. So the unit's solid. So now I'm going to do is going to take the test plate off, and we're going to go ahead and install the valve body. All right. So here's the EPC solenoid. I got the linkage. Got my roll pin in here, and everything is set up here. <clears throat> okay. So let me just get rid of this test plate. Prepare the valve body, and then we can go ahead and do that. So again, I will be right back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load the valve body on. And of course, when I was going through the valve body, I took the pressure regulator valve out because I wanted to clean everything in and out of there with, this, uh, with the bore. And actually, the solenoid reg valve, which is located here, uh, actually was stuck. And I have that tool that I got from Sonex, uh, that kind of deburs the bore. Let me just show it to you real quick. So I knock this through here, and that uh, deburs the bore for the solenoid rake valve, and then you just have this little nut I put screw I put in here, and then I pull it back out. All right, so, and all the valves are free, and again, I always take out the pressure regulator and the solenoid rake valve. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put this valve body on. It has a couple of dowel pins, lineup pins, and we got to just make sure we catch the manual valve. Okay, that's it. All right, here is your retainer for the EPC solenoid. It has a few different kinds, so you want to make sure that you get the right one. Uh, for the right year, for the year of the car you're working on. Okay, so this there's a um, you know a little cutout that this will go right into. Set it right in place, easy. And there's pretty much just two different size bolts. All right, so the shorter ones will go along here on the outside and the longer ones, of course, all on the metal plate. And here's a temp sensor that's gonna face that way. You have a bolt that's going to go here. You could put it in, but um, you know, give it a couple of turns so everything's lined up. But the solenoids are going to go there. Okay, we got one more here. There we go. And for the detent, well, detent's there, so this one I'll just put here, they're the same. Okay. Let me get my eight millimeter here. Once these are all, you know, snug, if you will, we do uh, 100 inch pounds. Okay, so this one and this one, we're not going to do yet. Okay, so these 
Oops, I think this is, what is this? I don't know. Let me just back it off a little bit. Thought it was set. Okay, there we go. Okay. So I like to do all the ones in the center first. Being the fact that it is an aluminum valve body. Okay, and now uh, we can do all the ones around the outside. lock-up solenoid. Okay, and we're going to have you know, our new set. All, all, all the solenoids actually are new. Uh, shift solenoid, so we're going to take this out. up here. I'm going to just uh, line up the uh, neutral switch. check them for that reason. Okay, I think we're good here. Now we're going to plug the solenoids in. Okay, so we have our temp sensor. And then solenoid, it's kind of like a hold down. That's just going to go right there. All right, shift solenoids, lock up solenoid, and EPC solenoid. Okay. All right, so let me go get the filter, which I forgot to get. Um, I'm going to put that pan on, extension housing, and it's pretty much done. Okay, the input shaft is turning good. All right, let me get the filter. Give me one second. I got to run and get it. Okay, filter. Okay, that's good. And molded rubber hand gasket here. Let's see, this is going to go this way. Okay. All right, we got our magnet here. And just make sure the pan looks good. It's not pushed down where it could be hitting the inlet to the filter.
suspension here. Uh, like 10 millimeter. Okay. Things are tight. Looks good. Okay. All right. So we got a little seal here. Of, uh, you know, I guess it butts up against the uh, drive shaft to try to keep the oil in. You know, so the splines don't leak. All right, so we got our gasket. I'm gonna put our gasket on. Make sure all the old gasket is cleaned off. Okay, that looks like it's in the case. Okay. Yeah, if a piece of gasket is on there, and we have a good chance of it leaking. So you want to make sure the surfaces are nice and clean. Okay. All right, the extension. All right, and that is a 13. Let me get my 13. And same extension. Okay, so the only thing we have left here are the two sensors and the transmission is done. All right, so let me just clean those up. And each of these, of course, has an O-ring that I'm gonna change. All right, this is the output. So I just wanna clean it up, change the O-ring, make sure this is in good shape. And I wanna clean this up because this has all the crap on it and this also has an O-ring. So let me do that and I'll be right back. We'll install those two and that's really about it. Transmission is uh, built, ready to go in. All right, so just uh, give me a few minutes and um, I'll be back. Okay, first we got the output speed sensor. Here's our new O-ring. I may have to, no, I should have done that before and I forgot. So what I want to do here, so that sensor goes in, And I usually do this and I'm, I didn't. Um, it gets a little crap filled up here, so sometimes I take like a battery terminal cleaner and, uh, and clean this up, but that, that's okay, you know. I just did that. And then 
when I put out, so now it's nice and smooth. And it goes in very easy. This one looks good. Okay, new O-ring. Here is the, uh, for the filler tube. Okay. Okay, thing turns real nice. All the bushings look good. Okay, so that is all on this 2012 E150 Ford van with a 4.6 4R70W. Uh, rebuilt is complete. And once again, we were dealing with blown planets. Um, actually, the cause of the problem was the bearing in the back of the direct drum uh, was blown because the snap ring broke. And I believe, again, that the output shaft pushed up against it and probably ruined the bearing and then it just kind of snowballed from there. So, unit is done. We're gonna push the van back in. Of course, we have our hot flush machine where we will uh, flush out those cooler lines for a little bit, get our little crap out of there, reinstall the unit with a rebuild converter, and send him on his way. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, it was a kind of like a last minute decision because um, I forgot to order the bearings, so that's why I didn't do the full rebuild. I said, oh, maybe we can just kind of do an assembly together, but uh, one of these days when I do have time, if you guys like these units, because I do get a lot of questions on them, I can uh, shoot for, uh, if I have some time on it, a full rebuild on these 4S70Ws. All right, but it's real nice unit to work on. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. And that's it. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.